Hi, this is Sean Casey, uh, registered dietitian, uh, physical performance coach with uh, Sport Pharmacy Magazine. And I have my co-author of Getting Groovy Smart with the Cholinergics here, Miss uh, Dr. Jessica Bielstahl. And with that being said, uh, Jessica, just introduce yourself a little bit. Hey, I'm Dr. Jessica Bielstahl. I'm an independent pharmacist, a sports pharmacist, and a author on the Sports Pharmacy Magazine here with Sean. So we are super excited to... Uh, to do our first article, joint article together in our upcoming issue on nootropics. So, uh huh, yeah. And it was fun. And you know, the fun thing about working with you is you're very similar to me. You like to write forever. I think we both could write forever. <laughs> trying to stay within space is always a difficulty. <laughs> it, I and think so that I know was there... the biggest challenge for both of us was the word count. So, <laughs> hopefully, everyone gets the most out of us using the maximum words we were allowed absolutely absolutely and building off that what would you say you know if you could have squeezed in more research into that already jam-packed article what would you have liked to have talked more about well i mean i guess there's a lot of things on choline um one of the things i find interesting on choline is that um, most people don't realize that it's one of the methyl donors so most people think of like the b vitamins being methylated but choline is actually one of the the main is a methyl donor. And so if you're short in folate or um, B vitamins, choline becomes the primary methyl source. So you actually need more choline in that in that part of your life if you're not um, have enough vitamins. So as we know, a lot of medications can deplete um, B vitamins and folate. So you definitely may need more choline than you think because of that. So I that's nothing we got to touch on in this. What about you, Sean? You know, the one thing that I would have liked to have gone in if I had another 500 to 1,000 words to play on, but is the impact of city choline with respect to addictions. Okay. Uh, so, which I found pretty interesting as we're looking at brain chemistry, how does it affect, you know, function, things of that nature. And obviously, right. addictions is something that a lot of people struggle with in, you know, the world today. And there's been... Um, I would say it's early research, but there's research looking at potentially uh, city colon use for like cocaine addictions, um, as well as other addictions, seeing if they can be used to help support recovery. Um, and I would say right now the research is really preliminary on it. Um, there's definitely some, you know, positive aspects that I've seen there. Um, and but like I said, I think that's another area as we're looking at brain chemistry that could have been a whole cool article um, in terms of how choline functions not only for cognitive enhancement, but also controlling the addictions. Yeah, I, that's really interesting. And I know we were talking before we started recording about how um, a lot of addictions also have nutrient completions in it. So there may be, again, another correlation in that um, aspect also. Um, uh, one thing that we, neither of us were able to fit in in our word count was also on uh, how to measure choline. I guess most people want to know, hey, am I choline deficient? I um, mean, there's not really like a lab out there um, that really measures or it's not a standard lab that people measure choline levels on. Um, so it's pretty much just supplemented. And um, one of the things, I guess, way to know if you have too much choline is you seem to get stinky. Um, people say that you smell like rotten fish. Um, you have increased sweating, increased salivation are probably two of the main symptoms of too much choline. So if you're sinking, make sure you take a shower and maybe too much choline. So uh, no, and and on the one the choline thing too, I was really interested looking at the research was um, like cho choline by tartrate. So I was thinking about like the, how that is the common one you see in all the supplements because it's yeah. you know it's not that expensive to put in. Um, but if you actually look at it from a nootropic standpoint, it does not appear to have much actual direct brain benefits. You know, I'm sure probably indirectly it helps there, but as in terms of direct benefits, pretty minimal. I find that really interesting. Like when you, I guess many people, they just look for the word choline and they think it's a choline supplement and not used to turning over the label on the back of the bottle and really digging into what form of choline or this could be any supplement what form of that supplement magnesium would be another one um that there's many different salt forms and they have different effects or some of them no not great effects so um really i guess encouraging people to look at the back of their bottle and figure out what forms of stuff they're taking would be a tip both of us i'm pretty sure would recommend 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know at least for myself when I'm recommending, so I've been fortunate to work with a lot of clients where we've used either um, Alpha GPC or City Choline um, or even Hooperzine A, which helps kind of limit the breakdown of um, the acetylcholine. And uh, as a whole, I, you know, it's always hard to say, like when there's not a placebo, is it from the supplement itself or from the, you know, the placebo effect? Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I have had most people respond relatively favorable, um, especially with uh, Hooperzine A when they're added on to acetylcholine. Um, okay. That combination, again, at least anecdotally works well. Um, Alpha GPC, uh, kind of hit or miss. Some people have done really well with Alpha GPC. Um, others, you know, not as strong of effect. Uh, the one thing that I've seen, at least in terms of cognitive performance, um, anecdotally, as well as with some objective measures, is that they're usually able to use like a lower dose of the city choline relative to the Alpha GPC to get effects. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, now, do and, you and see when you, when you actually um, have your athletes take them or your clients, is it a daily supplement? Or are you having them do it just before like a training session? Do you feel, see better results if they take it consistently? Generally speaking, I'm doing it on a consistent basis, okay. like just on a daily thing. Uh, that being said, I have had, because there's been some research looking at alpha GPC actually showing increased uh, mid, mid thigh pull on like an isometric, um, you know, deadlift or some of your performance enhancing benefits. Mm -hmm. I have played around um, with that as more of like an acute dosing, um, about 45 minutes before whatever the activity was. I can't say that I necessarily consistently saw improvements though um, on there. Um, but I would say, you know, from a cognitive standpoint, if I had alpha GPC paired with Hooperzine A, that almost was always, you know, produced benefit. Um, City Choline, I found that to be relatively effective even just on its own um, okay. without having that added to it, especially if doing it on a consistent basis. I just found people said, that, you know, they felt like words would come to their mind a little bit quicker. Um, they felt, you know, sharper, a little bit less fog. Um, and then to uh, every now and again, I'll be playing around with them, just objective measures like, hey, did this make a change? Yes or no. Um, yeah. And so like I say, it's, it, they're fun to play around with. I think, you know, you're still f figuring out how to optimize the exact protocol. And um, I don't know about you, but that'd be the one area I'd love to see research go into moving forward is actually testing like, hey, theoretically, Cooper ZNA should enhance, you know, should be synergistic with, you know, city choline, alpha GBC. But to what degree does it actually do that beyond just, you know, anecdotal testing that, you know, one of us is doing on our sides? Yeah, I was going to say, I think most a lot of us see anecdotally or just in small, small sample sizes. So to see some of the articles or some of the supplements that we're recommending on a much larger scale for both, all, I think for anybody would be really cool to see and um, really, I think, make a big difference in the supplement world on recommendations. So yeah i agree with you some pretty interesting research that could come out so yeah it, it should be neat and the nice thing too with at least for your uh your choline doses so i always tell people so when, I, when i'm working on formulations you know again like you're saying i'm running small pilots right yeah. and uh the nice thing with like your your gpc or, or your choline is you can dose that relatively high without any issues the one thing that i would strongly caution people with is especially with if you're working with cuprosine a be aware that you're going to start having side effects, especially if you're getting it over 200 milligrams. I've uh, in people, I find it tends to either dry their mouth or they'll get a little bit of GI issues. And so that one, you know, make sure that you're if you're dosing it, dosed up a little bit, you know, slower to make sure you're not overdosing yourself right away, and just be aware that side effects will occur um, for some people once you're starting to get over 200 uh, microgram servings. Yeah, I think that probably goes back to our uh, conversation of like just because it's an over-the-counter supplement doesn't mean more is always better <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i guess so i mean it, for those that aren't familiar cooper zine works similar to some of the medications on the market for alzheimer's so like donepazil and rivetastigmine and stuff like that so if you're on those obviously you can't would not recommend taking them together but um the side effect profile is very similar mm -hmm. and so no. But yeah, I think. With that being said, is there anything else that you can think of you want to add on? 
No, I think I think we covered it in our. Uh, we we can't go over our time limit, so <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I think the one thing that you and I were talking about. I obviously do a lot more work with younger females and uh, more female athletes in my um, clinical setting, and so uh, we were kind of going back and forth about um, estrogen actually helping with increasing the metabolism of. Um, choline and helping that with a, increasing acetylcholine. So my, I guess my research or one area that would be kind of intriguing is as the, because it induces an enzyme. So um, estrogen induces this enzyme. So as you get older and your estrogen levels start to decrease, so perimenopausal, postmenopausal, um, the lack of estrogen, does that cause some of the like memory issues and brain fogs that you see and um, older women that um, as they transition through to menopause when their estrogen levels are completely flat, um, could uh, helping with acetylcholine or supplementing with choline also help even more dramatically than maybe using um, estrogens. So just kind of an area that kind of intrigued me as we started digging into this topic a little more. Now we just got to get funding so we can both run our respective studies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's listening and was willing to donate, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. So, well, we appreciate everybody for listening and uh, we enjoyed our issue of the magazine. Um, I know we both wrote on separate, separate also. Um, so you'll probably see some videos with uh, Sean on some more on, um, Oh crap, creatine. <laughs> and I have Rodeo La Rosa coming out. So uh, we hope you enjoy the whole edition of the magazine. I know we've all been super excited about writing it. And um, this one we've all been looking forward to. So we hope you enjoy it as much as, as much as we did writing it. Absolutely. Thanks for listening and we'll talk more soon. Thanks.